We are now going to see what is generally termed the fashion show. Really, it is an exhibition of gowns that men can actually wear. The men ought to be just as interested in this display as the women, because we must always remember that they have the very great pleasure of paying for them. However, I may add that some of the smartest gowns in my shop are the least expensive. Number uh, one. Two. The embroidery marks this as a background creation too. Its intricate shirring and sculptured bodice uh, emphasizing the supple drape of the fabric, rich white satin of man-made fibers. Number two. Two. Les spectatrices, leurs hautement blasées, voire scrutent chaque modèle avec une attention passionnée. Six. Hommage à un autre grand artiste. Voici la robe Matisse. Dont le rouge rappelle la vibrante tonalité de certaines toiles du maître signé. Eight. Seven. Eight. This elegant dinner to theater ensemble is of Orlon sound, emphasizing the light, unfelted line the designer calls the whip line. Fabric poops are worked horizontally to give the effect of being threaded through narrow panels. Black cocktail dress tapers from snug bodice to wide hem. Number 15, 16, 17. Les jeunes étudiantes danoises venues s'initier au secret de l'élégance parisienne doivent se croire dans le palais des mille et une nuits. Et pour chacune de ces nuits de Paris, de Londres, de New York, voici bien Gamma. On va se prendre plus d'exemples en bleu. Wireline chose to advantage in this adaptation of the midi, a dinner gown with buttons down the back. The Y is completed at the shoulders with two accenting bows. Twelve. Six. Well, really, it can't. For here is Carol in a Charles Cream suit 17. for 1951 in white barathea. Slim skirt tapering to a narrow hemline. The hip line emphasized by the three-quarter length jacket.
Umbra, Umbra, rap over coat and peacock velour, featuring wide sleeves cuffed with phantom beaver. The day dress underneath is in lightweight wool to match, from the softly folded skirt wrapped over at the back. He breaks, he promised to quit Ten. it just for my sake. Eleven. He ties up one foot and the saddle Twelve. puts on. With a leap and Thirteen. a bound, he is mounted and gone. Fourteen. The first time Fifteen. I met him was early in spring. Sixteen. He was riding a bronco, a high-headed thing. He tipped Eight. me a wink as he gaily Nineteen. did go. For he wished me to look 20. at his bucking bronco. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. The next time I met him, twas late in the fall. 19. He was swinging the gals at the Mile 20. City Ball. He laughed and he talked 21. as we danced to and fro. Promised never 22. to ride on another Bronco. 23. He gave me some presents, among them a ring. 24. The return that I made him a far 25. better thing. Twas a young maiden's heart, I would 26. have you all know. And he won it by riding 27. his bucking Bronco. Whether to call this worth coach, check or plaid was quite a problem. The title is Bon Destin, broadly translatable as What Do You Think? Anyway, worn over a navy wool dress, it fits the bill admirably. In this case, no, brown, no, brown. No. It's a non-stop parade of high fashion and fine fabrics, and now it's 17. the turn of Joyce. Voici 
Chouette Boulogne. Un tailleur d'une sobre élégante. 16. Pour les réunions de fin d'après-midi, les dîners au restaurant. Tom Brown. Présente Cri de Paris, où le velours se marie au satin. Medianoche. Fait d'un son. Tom Brown. using three-dimensional embroidery on a dress basically quite simple. The designer, Tom Brown. The dress, lovely. Next up.